Hey everyone, uh, Jeremy here. It's Thursday night and we're going to create smart. It's going to be awesome. Um, it is Thursday night uh, and uh, this is our new night. We used to do them on Fridays, but we have switched to Thursday and that's why we are live tonight. It makes sense, right? Um, so what are we working on tonight? Uh, my buddy Kevin has the most beautiful Jack Russell dog. And uh, he asked me if I would draw his dog, and uh, he sent me a picture. And once I saw the picture, I had to absolutely have uh, I have to draw this dog. So uh, this is what Higgins looks like. Um, Higgins should look good in the coffee shop. <laughs> I'm not doing uh, Higgins in, in coffee tonight. I'm, I'm going to do him in colored pencil, but he would look good <laughs> in a coffee shop. He would look good in coffee, actually. Maybe I should do it in coffee. Yeah, I'm not really set up for that. Anyway, we're going to do uh, Higgins and colored pencil, if that's okay with you guys. Um, oh, it is a uh, leap day. Yeah, that, that's cool. I forgot about that. Once every four years. So happy leap day, everybody. We're going to leap right into this. <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah. All right. So uh, I kind of sketched out a little bit where I think Higgins should go just so that I would uh, make sure I get all the proportions correct. But I'm just going to jump right in. And... Um, Higgins is a Jack Russell. I don't know if Kevin's in the room tonight. Sometimes he pops in, sometimes he doesn't. He's a pretty busy guy. Uh, but maybe um, maybe if he pops in later on, he can tell you guys about Higgins. But I've known Kevin for like um, a number of years. And uh, hey, hey, Oh, I, I guess I should say hi to everybody in the room. Sorry. Um, hi, Hater. Uh, hi, hey, Tom. Hey, uh, Larry. Hey, Kid. Hey, Rome. Um, yeah, we got a party tonight. Cool. Yeah, um, anyway, I've known Kevin for a, a number of years. He just loves his dogs. He's a real uh, animal person. Uh, he used to have horses, too. Hey, Kevin is in the house. Cool, yeah. So, like, Kevin, if you want to tell people about Higgins, feel free. Otherwise, I'm just going to draw Higgins. But, yeah, I've been meaning to, to draw um, Higgins for a while, so this is a good opportunity. Once every leap year, I'll draw a dog. <laughs> Hopefully you guys are having a good uh, good leap day, leap year day, whatever they call it, whatever the kids call it. I don't know. I never really, you know, it seems like people are looking for excuses to celebrate things nowadays. Like, I never really celebrated leap year day. Like, it was never like a big deal. But, you know, it does happen... Uh, only happen like once every four years so maybe it is a big deal I, I think it'd be a big deal if like your birthday was on like leap year day i know some people their birthday falls on this day and then they get to say that they're like one fourth of their age <laughs> which would be great imagine being like 40 years old and you're only like 10 really because you only had 10 birthdays Well, I hope you guys are doing well tonight. Looking forward to that weekend. We're almost there, guys. Almost there. We can come right around the corner. So I'm not going to rush through this drawing. Uh, if I get it all done tonight, great. But uh, if not, that's fine, too. Sometimes when doing these um, these colored pencil pictures, I, I start with watercolor just to get like a lot of color in quickly. I'm not going to do that this time. I'm just going to take my time with it and have some fun. I, I don't think Kevin cares when I'm done with it. Like, he, 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 as long as I get it done someday, uh, I don't think he's going to beat me up too much. So I'm just going to take my time with it. If it takes more than today, that's totally fine. I'm trying to get this reflection in the eyes here. So I think it's going to be a little bit of blue in there, too. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have some fun with the colors here, I think. Uh, hey, uh, Rome, um, you're in the room. I was going to send you an email. I still have your picture. I haven't sent it to you. I totally forgot and flaked on that. Um, I'm going to get that out in the mail tomorrow just to let you know. But, yeah, like I, I saw it when I was going through my picture. I'm like, oh, crap, I'm, I'm supposed to send that out. I totally forgot about that. You know how us artists are. We're like, we're always flaking out on things, but... We'll get that in the mail to you. It's no fun to just do pictures and not actually send them to people. Yeah, oh, sorry. Yeah, Geppetto's got this, um, so, got this cool little cowboy hat here. 
or like floppy hat or something. It's seen better days, but I found that and I'm like, yeah, he's gonna look cool in that. So, yeah, um, totally slipped my mind, Rome, but we'll we'll get that out to you. I was just thinking Higgins looks a lot like Rome. Uh, I know they're different animals, but they've got similar markings. That's what reminded me. But yeah, you guys like the hat? I think I think that's kind of cool. I'm looking for a top hat for him to uh, wear for uh, St. Patrick's Day coming up. I don't know what day St. Patrick's Day is on, but I am definitely going to do a stream on St. Patrick's Day again. I did one last year, and it was a lot of fun. Um, just because, like... Usually, so I do drink while I do these uh, these streams just for fun, uh, but I I rarely am ever really, really drunk. Um, but on St. Patrick's Day, I was drunk, and I still create, created a pretty cool picture. So I was pretty uh, proud of myself. I, I think the picture turned out really good. Um, I'll have to dig it back up. Oh, wait, I sent it to, uh, to Just Dave. That's right. I no longer have it. But... Um, I have a picture of it somewhere, but it was uh, of a uh, Irish guy in a pub. I think it turned out really nice. So, just getting an eye going there. Yeah, hopefully your guys' this week is going pretty good. I'm looking forward to this weekend. It's going to be nice. Um, I'm looking forward to next week. I think next week I'm going to be super busy. Uh, starting Monday, I get to find out if I'm in that Maker's Mark um, bottle challenge thing to uh, create like a Maker's Mark bottle. So I'll find that out on Monday. And you know, I've, I kind of made peace with it. If I if I don't get accepted, that's fine. You know, that's I'll I'll do the next one. It's no big deal. Um, I think I sent in a pretty solid design, but if the, you know. There's a number of reasons why they may not accept it. Like, there's only 94 slots, and maybe they've got more artists than um, they know what to do with. And uh, there are some artists out there that are really good, so I wouldn't mind losing to them. That wouldn't be so bad. But also, it would be fun. fun. So I, I do hope that I get accepted into that, but if I don't, it's not a big deal. And then, so I got that going next week, hopefully. And then also... Uh, next week is Comic Con, which is cool. Um, Comic Con's got a few celebrities that I recognize, um, and then like a lot of people I don't. the The one that I <laughs> great breaking pencil heads already. Um, the one celebrity that I'm looking forward to seeing is um, she's a uh, she was in um. Well, she was Jeannie in I Dream of Jeannie. Uh, Barbara Eden, I think her, is her uh, last name. Um, but she's like 90-something years old. Like, and she's going to be at a Comic-Con. So I think that's going to be cool to go and see her. Like, she's uh, she's pretty old. <laughs> like, um, There's been a couple of, like, old people at comic cons before like um they had a. Uh, I think she's passed away but michelle nichols from uh star trek i remember seeing her at comic con one year and then you know william shatner he's older than dirt every now and then he he comes out they kind of have these reunions like this one seems to be like a um like a Charmed slash Buffy the Vampire Slayer reunion. Like the guy who played Spike on Buffy the Vampire Slayer, I don't know if you guys remember him. He's going to be there. And then if you guys remember that show from the 90s about the witches uh, named um, Charmed with uh, Shannon Dotry, um, uh I forget, Holly Marie Combs, I think is her name. She's going to be there. Um... I'm not good with names, but uh, a couple of people from that show Charmed is going to be there, which is kind of cool. I mean, I was never a huge fan of the show, but I watched it, so like I at least know of these people. But the Barbara Eden one, that, that's 
I mean, that lady... That lady's a bona fide celebrity. Like, she's been around forever. So, that'd be a real treat to run into her. Alyssa Milano will not be there. I think she's a little stuck up. <laughs> she's too good for uh, uh, Comic-Con. But everybody else is going to be there. Yeah, it's it's almost like notably absent is uh, Alyssa Milano when everybody else is going to be there. Like they even have, I, I don't remember his name, but the um, the guy who played the angel dude, uh, Leo, I guess his name was, on the show, he's going to be there. And all these people, they look old. Like, I remember when the show was uh, on air back in the 90s and stuff, but, like, they're all, they're all like, super old now. <laughs> That's what's so funny about these, um, these uh, Comic-Cons, especially, I don't know, it's probably different for, like, the big ones. Sorry about that focusing issue, but um, it's probably different for the bigger Comic-Cons, like the ones out in L.A. or in, in New York or something. But here in, in Kentucky, we get all the B-list and D-list celebrities. Like, I don't even know if you could, like, call them D-list. Like, these guys might be, like, F-list. I don't know. They haven't done anything in years. Like, they were probably a C-list celebrity back when they were popular. So, I don't know. But then, you know, I I like the show, so I can't, I can't like, really knock them too much. But it's just cool to see people that you recognize from TV. But yeah, the the Barbara Eden thing would be a, like a real treat. Like especially if I get to talk to her, that'd be kind of cool. Because like that's part of TV history, you know. Like the um, I Dream of Genie. That's like that's like TV history right there. Like you have other shows that come and go, like Charmed, right? Charmed came and went, not a big deal. Um, but I Dream of Genie. I mean that's that's uh that's a big one. Everybody knows that show. That'd be like um, running into like Mary Tyler Moore or somebody like that. You know what I mean? Like, I barely know her name, but I every but I I know, I know that like she was a genie in a bottle and all that stuff. I know all that. Anyway, uh, yeah. So that's next weekend. So that'll be kind of cool. Pretty sure, pretty sure I'm a shoe in for that one. I don't, I don't know what position they'd have me. It's, it's like a volunteer type thing. So like, you know, you kind of chip in wherever you can. Mostly I'm going so that I can get kind of like, like backdoor access to the artists. Like, um, oh, what's the guy's name? Larry, Larry Hamas, Hamas? Something like that. The guy who drew the G.I. Joe comic books. Um, last year, I got to talk to him for a little bit. And that was amazing. That guy's, that guy's I want to say older than dirt too. But like I want to be respectful because I really like that guy. Um, I, I don't think that he would ever watch this show. But <laughs> you never know. But anyway, he used to draw all the G.I. Joe comic books. He came up with the characters, all my favorite characters. All the ninja characters from G.I. Joe. Like Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow and stuff like that. Anyway, he was there last year, and I got to talk to him for a bit. And that was really cool because I got to, like, I don't know, it's just basically express, you know, your appreciation for their work, that sort of stuff. I don't know. They probably hear that kind of stuff all the time. But especially, like, with an older actor or actress or whatever um, who has been out of the limelight for a while, you know, expressing that you still care about their work and stuff, maybe that's kind of cool. I don't know. They might, they might be kind of like over it. They might be over their own celebrity. I don't, I have no idea. I try not to like, you know, be one of those guys that just like, oh my God, I'm, I'm like here with so-and-so celebrity or something. Yeah, Comic-Cons are a lot of fun. Like, I, I, I realize like not everybody's into like the nerdum and all that stuff. Like maybe you guys have never read a comic or, or whatever, but... It's still kind of cool, you know. It's, it's kind of cool for people who are into, like, art of any type. Because, like, even if you're not into, like, you know, the characters, I don't know, like, Marvel characters or whatever. 
that's cool. That's fine and everything. But like the art itself is is really kind of cool. So it's like you're going to um, a big old art show, really. Anyway, I'm just kind of roughing this in at the moment, just kind of figuring out where all the different marks are. I'll come back and make this look um, a lot better. In a little bit you guys know how it goes especially with these uh colored pencils it takes a while to get all that pigment in there this is why i kind of cheat sometimes and use watercolor just to put down like large areas of color so that i spend less time with the colored pencils but also it's okay this is this is like a relaxing night where we're just drawing and having fun and conversating Oh, haters into the Bitcoin. Let's see. The past few nights have been uh, quite rough because of the recent uh, pump in Bitcoin prices. Are you are you trading like day trading on those Bitcoins? I tried to do that for a little while and it became too stressful for me. <laughs> um, BIC asks, uh, Jeremy, do you ever get confused when you draw with different mediums? Um, like you do tin coffee, then switch to pastel chalk, uh, have that problem. So that's a great question. That is a great question. So um, the question is, do you ever get confused when you switch between the different uh, mediums? Um, you know, I want to say yes, a little bit, because they are all different. Um, you know, what works in one doesn't work in another. Uh, they have similar concepts between each of them. So like you're still trying to get you know, your shadows and, and midtones and highlights and all those tonal values in there and stuff. But how you go about it might be a little bit different. Um, I will say that I haven't quite mastered the art of painting yet. So if anything, it kind of suffers when I go and do a pencil drawing and then switch to painting. Um, because I think the painting suffers there because I want to draw when I'm painting. I haven't quite mastered the whole like um, painterly process. So like you want your picture to look like it was painted, right? Um, when you're when you're doing painting. Now some of them do. Like I I just feel like I have to uh, I I have to spend more time with that because I haven't mastered it yet. Some of the pictures I do um, look painted, um, whether it's the coffee paintings that I do, or sometimes when I do the watercolor and the gouache. Uh, th or even acrylics or something like that um often they do look like they're painted which is good that's what i'm shooting for right uh but then also a lot of times more often than i would like they look like they're drawn you know or like i i come back and i end up doing something with pencil just to clean it up or something like that or or i break out like a, a fine liner brush or something uh and get kind of like some sketchy kind of details in there that wouldn't really belong in a painting so much. So uh, when switching between uh, painting and drawing, I think that that's probably the biggest risk is that you might fall on bad habits of uh, wanting to sketch all the time. Now, that said, you know, there's not, there are some uh, painters out there who aren't really good at drawing and, and vice versa. It's, it's, it's kind of strange. Um, skills in one set don't necessarily translate to the other they're similar concepts or similar things that you want to do but the actual techniques and stuff don't always ne necessarily translate over so like i feel like when i'm painting um my goal especially in the beginning is to kind of like mass in a bunch of like color and, and stuff like that even when i'm painting with pastels um which you know they consider that painting as well um, I just want to get down like a big mass of, uh, a form, you know, and then I come back and, and, uh, try to like get a shape out of it and stuff. I feel like that's more what's going on when I'm, when I'm doing painting, obviously that's not necessarily the case when I'm, uh, I'm drawing, you know, it, it depends. Sometimes I draw where I'm kind of doing the same thing. Um, but I'm not right now. So like. It does, it does kind of depend. It really does. It's, it, it's, that's a really interesting question. I'm going to have to think about that some more, actually. Off the top of my head, I do think that it kind of suffers switching from medium to medium.
Like, I do think that there's probably some benefit in picking one that you really like and just sticking with it. Like, you hear that actually as advice for, like, artists who are trying to, like, uh, develop their own personal style. Um, and I kind of agree with it. Like, pick something that you really like. No, I'm not going to do it, obviously. I, I actually enjoy switching around uh, from medium to medium, especially at this point in my kind of, like, development. But ultimately, you do kind of want to pick one and kind of, like, excel in it. And that's not to say that you're boxed in where you can't do something else. It's just... You know, that becomes your specialty, I guess. You can always, like, kind of break out of it, but they do say that, like, you know, um, you want to kind of develop a, a style that people recognize so that people know what to expect and stuff. And I, I, I agree with that. I, I'm i a big manage expectations kind of guy. So, like... You know, even even if I'm not drawing very well, I want I want it to be consistently not very well, <laughs> so that people know what to expect, right? So, like on this show, I feel like you guys um, kind of have an expectation that something okay is going to come out of this pencil, but you also have the expectation that like not all of them are are going to be perfect. And I felt I felt like I'm more comfortable in that area where you guys don't have like high expectations of me. It certainly makes me feel a lot more comfortable. Um, like, I feel like it would be, it would, it would actually be very terrible to have the expectation that I'm going to de deliver a masterpiece every single time. That, that would be like a lot of pressure that I probably wouldn't live up to. I'd be like, I, I got to quit. I can't do it anymore because like there's too much expectation there. Anyway, so yeah, I, I do think that there's some benefit to, um, to actually like developing a, a personal style in like a particular medium where you really master what you're uh, what you what you're good at. Uh, thanks, Larry. I appreciate that. Oh, uh, GI Joe as a kid, um, I had a cartoon crush on Lady J. Oh, one hundred percent, Lady J. And uh, what was her name? Scarlet. Um, her too. Like they came in a pair. Like especially on the um, especially on the cartoon on on the. Fix the blurriness. My camera is not one to focus today. Um, they kind of came in a pair, and at least in the uh, the TV show, like the uh, the cartoon, they kind of tried to pair them up with. Um, let's see, Lady J was with Flint, and I think Scarlet was paired up with uh, Duke. So you could kind of like ship them a little bit. Sorry about that blurriness. But yeah, I know exactly what you mean. All right, so let me look at this a moment. I want it's going to come up here. Okay, so this, yeah, I think my sketch is a little messed up. I think this is going to be the bottom of this top mouth, which means all of this. Let me go ahead and kind of rough that in just so that I know where things are. So I think this is going to be kind of a pinkish mouth color. It's hard to see on the camera, but... Uh, Jeremy, I have a pretty big portfolio that I acquired in 2012. Um, I assume you're talking about crypto. Yeah, when it was cheap, it is uh, chips that never sold since uh, 2018. Oh, okay, cool. Hey, congratulations, man. I have a little bit of crypto. I don't know. I thought I thought it'd be kind of fun to get into that and, um, you know, try my hand at, like, you know, almost day trading. Um, and uh, I did that for a little bit. And um, that was right before, like, uh, man, this camera. That was right before the last uh, crypto crash. And, um, yeah, I lost a little bit of money, but that's okay. It, 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 I didn't lose a lot. I didn't have a lot invested or anything like that. So it wasn't a big deal. And it was kind of like a learning lesson. But, yeah, I kind of wish I had uh, got into crypto earlier. Like, I always seem to miss the boat on things, you know. 
Larry J poster over Lady's bed. <laughs> Lady J, sorry. Lady J's poster over late. That's funny. Now we know. And knowing is half the battle. <laughs> I do love G.I. Joe. Um, and like I said, I, I, I think his last name is Hema. He's a, he's a Japanese guy. And um, there is a, a documentary on Netflix, I think, uh, about the toys of the 80s that we grew up with and stuff like that. And, um, and he's actually featured in that. Uh, because they they do talk about the G.I. Joe. So the G.I. Joe toys, the Hasbro toys, were largely be, uh, produced in conjunction with the uh, comic books. So, like, the comic books and the toys were went hand in hand. Like, oftentimes, they created characters for the, um, for the comics just to sell the toys and vice versa. So... And and he he was the one who was writing a lot of the stories, especially the stories that involved the ninjas, which is what I was into. I was like into like the ninjas and everything. And uh, he's just a really cool guy. Like he just like I again, he's a Japanese guy, and I don't want to stereotype, but I'm pretty sure he's a ninja himself. You know, like in my mind, that's what he is. But anyway, I got to meet him last year at Comic Con, and it was really cool. They say don't meet your your heroes and stuff, but yeah, you you just don't want to hang out with them too long. You know, eventually they'll disappoint you. But just meeting them in person and stuff is kind of cool. So that's what I go to these comic cons for. Like different people go for different reasons and stuff. Some people like the cosplay, which is you know that's kind of cool. Like people put a lot of time and effort into those costumes. Like they really go all out, especially. Um, Especially at some of these bigger comic cons, which this one's a pretty big one. It's a pretty big one for the region, and um, you know these people like, oh man, you could tell they spent like a lot of time on their outfits because they they look exactly like them. I need to remember to shut off Discord when I'm on here. That's how I'm gonna beep in and stuff. Now actually waiting for the having to happen. Mm. I'm going to shut off Discord real quick because it's over here beeping. That's annoying. There we go. Yeah, so like uh, it's important to get like the uh, tonal values in here uh, beneath the nose and make that transition into the nose. And a lot of this is grainy, but I'm going to work with that a little bit over time. I'm not really like stressed about it right now. Hey, Packer, how's it going? For those who don't know, I'm going to plug his book. Um, Packer wrote a book about uh, D.B. Cooper and a potential uh new suspect on who might have been db cooper and for you youngins out there who have no idea who db cooper is um he's like the only uncaught sky pirate in like aviation history um back during the 80s he stole like i guess what would be the equivalent of like millions nowadays by hijacking a plane and then he parachuted out the back and either died in the process or escaped with a ton of money. <laughs> yeah, so um, uh, I forget the title of it. It's like, where, where was, where is Skip or something like that? Um, I'm going to have to, like, give me one second. I really like Packer Jack. I wouldn't be doing this if, uh, um, I'm going to have to link to it some, uh, yeah, where was Skip? There we go. Where was Skip? Give me one second. I'll get back to the drawing. I just wanted to uh, link to it.
There we go. Boom. That's uh that's Pepper Jack's book. So I think it's kind of cool. Like, you know, I support creative efforts of any kind. So like if any of you guys have some sort of creative like project you've you've worked on or, or something like that, let me know. Like in my mind, we're like a community. So I'm happy to like, you know, I I don't have a like a lot of people who watch this show, but I'm happy to promote it to the people who, who do. You know, I don't know how much like overlap there is like uh, between the art world and uh, D.B. Cooper, but, you know, maybe there is some. I don't know. We'll find out. But mostly I, I just support creative e efforts and, you know, like I, I know that uh, Packer's a, uh, a friend of this channel and I know he put a lot of time and effort into that book, so. Anyway, I can support it. If you can find an art angle packer, I'll bring you on here and interview you. <laughs> Need to find some way to tie D.B. Cooper into an art heist. I've been watching the, um, oh, what is it? It's on Hulu, uh, but it's, um, I think it's from the History Channel. It's a, it's a show about the greatest heists uh, of all time. And uh, it's hosted by like Pierce Brosnan, which is fun. And um, it's just it's just a fascinating show. All the different things that like have happened. Um, I, I don't know why I'm into it, but like you know, like art heists and and like jewelry heists and bank heists and and things like that. It's just fascinating to me. I hope one day my art is good enough to where somebody wants to sw steal it. <laughs> that would be awesome. That's my that's my new goal as an artist is uh man, I this sucks that this uh this won't stay focused. Sorry about that. Let me move this over and give that something to focus on. I don't know why it keeps messing up. Anyway, um that's my new goal as an artist is to uh create some sort of art that somebody wants to steal. Then I can retire. Uh, Hater says Bitcoin's price is expected to surge due to the growing interest from financial institutions and the anticipation of several ETF approvals after BlackRock and MicroStrategy. Uh, it's, so it's never too late. Yeah, um, you know, at some point I'll probably uh, buy back in. I know that it seems to be perking up from the crypto winter that has been through. Like I, I know that I want to say a year, two years, maybe ago, it kind of took a dip and I haven't been paying close attention, but it does seem to be like coming back, like recovering a little bit. I still have some crypto. Um, I've got some Litecoin and I had some Solana, uh, but I like, I was going to use that for like development. Like I wanted to develop with uh, Solana, like as a C sharp developer. And um, that kind of took a dump <laughs> with the uh, that whole uh, oh, what was that scandal? But yeah, Solana Solana appears to have come back from the dead. So I may kind of resurrect that idea, but I was wanting to do some. Uh, I was wanting to do some Web three development, not so much investment side of it, but just like you know, kind of like come come up with like a decentralized app i i didn't really have a like a, a really great idea for one but it's something i was going to toy with but then you know the bottom fell out and i'm like oh okay well i'm glad i didn't do that i like the smile on this dog's face remember when nfts were a big thing like that was a like all the artists and stuff were so into like doing nfts i feel like that died i feel like nft is a bad word now but that was a big thing for a while i don't know maybe nfts was still a big thing but uh it seemed like those kind of died off 
I wonder like where the big hype stuff is going to go, you know, like, so like right now, the big concern among artists is will AI art replace them? And I kind of have mixed feelings on that. I, I feel like for many of the types of um, things that artists do, yes, uh, yes, you will be replaced. Sorry, guys. Um, that's a given. And um, that would be like the illustrator type art. Um, you know, the people who do art for like, I don't know, magazines, um, well, magazine probably back too, but, um, you know, like graphics for, I don't know, like a podcast cover, things like that. Those are, those are all like stock art, that sort of stuff. Maybe like even prints that hang up on the wall for like decor. I think a lot of that that probably is going to get replaced by AI. Unless somebody has like a special kind of thing that they're collecting, you know? Like there's always room for like real art. Um, just because like people do collect things that they, they like, right? So like, you know, you can, you can maybe have a computer draw Higgins here, right? But it, it's not going to be Higgins drawn by Jeremy, which is, um, you know, I think what Kevin was looking for, like Kevin, Kevin can go off and have Higgins drawn by anybody, but he wanted Higgins drawn by me, which makes me feel special. Yeah, I can't replace that. So I don't know. It's a mixed bag. It really is. Um, the tough part is like kids, you know, when they're like trying to pick a career or something like, do they go to art school? I mean, I don't know. That's, that's a, that's a tough call there. Do you go to art school or do you do something else? I don't know. Yeah, so, like, I do feel like there's some mixed messages there, kid. Um, I thought that Packer was into um, uh, Forrest Fenn and D.B. Cooper. I, this is a bit of a, a surprise to me. Like, the entire time, he had some other uh, suspect in mind. But, no, I, I mean, you know, even if you have the least bit interest in, in D.B. Cooper, I think he had, like, um, uh, the ebook version. Yeah, the ebook ver version is, like, three bucks, you know. Just read it out of curiosity. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to shill for Packer Jack here real quick. Um, it's three bucks, guys. Come on. Buy the book. Flip through it. See if you're interested. It's only three bucks. You could learn... The identity of D.B. Cooper for less than the price of a cup of coffee. Think about that. I would make an excellent show. It's not a lie if you believe it. Like, I believe that um, you can get the identity of D.B. Cooper for less than the price of a cup of coffee. So, that's not that's a that's a truthful shill. But it is kind of interesting to me that people are still fascinated by DB Cooper, um, like you know, in today's day and age. Because uh, I remember, I mean, I was too young when db cooper actually happened so it's not like i was watching tv like oh my god like check out this db cooper guy um but i do remember growing up and seeing the story on things like unsolved mysteries uh things of that nature so kind of like i knew of him kind of on the periphery and then you know there's been a couple of documentaries in recent years uh that's kind of like created like a uh like a new surge of interest in D.B. Cooper, which I think is interesting. And I, I think if you're just interested in avionics in general, like just, you know, flight and the history of flight and things like that, at some point, that's going to be part of the conversation. You know, like if you're talking, if you're talking to even modern day pilots um, about anything or just like anybody who's interested in uh, like aircraft and flying and things like that, at some point, <laughs> at some point, if you talk long enough, you're going to be talking about D.B. Cooper at some point, you know, it's just going to happen. And then, you know, he's also been like a part of like pop culture, um, 
to the point where even even like in recent years, you know, he's he's had a mention on Loki, which is like a very nerdy TV show, but also like Breaking Bad. Um, yeah, Phoebe Cooper's part of the uh, the general cultural history of uh, United States, really. It's like part of American history. That's American history, guys. Come on. Um, let's see. Hater says, uh, I got mine at uh, 10 pounds uh, each in October 2012. The guy who sold me that USB was making fun, uh, fun of Bitcoin in his future at that time. Poor bloke. Jeremy, that was 1971. Yeah, I was too young for uh, D.B. Cooper. Oh, 1971. Shit, I wasn't even alive. <laughs> I was not alive in 1971. <laughs> yeah, so there's no way I could have watched it on TV. <laughs> like, I wasn't even alive. <laughs> That's funny. Like, I don't even think my older brother was alive. No, he was not. He's a... Uh... Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, so I guess my first experience with D.B. Cooper would have been like on um, Unsolved Mysteries. Because I, I, I used to watch the crap out of that show. Like that, that was my show back in the day. Um, Unsolved Mysteries. I used to look forward. I think it was on Wednesday nights. But I would look forward to it. And, um, you know, clear my my useful schedule. Like, <laughs> like, I, like I had a lot to do going on back then. Um, but yeah, I would, I would make sure I was there in the living room to watch that. So I know it's still looking pretty rough, guys, but we've got we've got a bit of a dog coming in here. Good old Higgins. Good I think I'm gonna come back and work on those teeth. Those teeth are gonna take a little bit of work. So the idea is to kind of like sketch this in and then kind of come back and refine it. It does look pretty sketchy and that's just naturally how uh, colored pencils work until you kind of blend them out. Um, and there's a couple of different ways you can blend them. I think I'm going to do like a lot of cross hatching in this, but um, you know, you can use like solvent to blend them. I don't think I have any. Um, you can use like burnishment probably, which is what I'm going to do. But right now, I just kind of want to get all of the little bits of Higgins in here so that we actually make some progress on the guy. So I'm just going to kind of sketch a lot of this in. So it's going to look rough, but that's okay. Yeah, so like when, um, when Bitcoin first came out, I was kind of aware of it. I didn't really know what was all what all was involved. My understanding was that it costs like a lot of electricity to mine it and you needed like a really good graphics card. So my idea was that I was going to um, put a computer underneath my desk at work so that I could use their electricity <laughs> and um, just kind of have like a little Bitcoin mining operation going on under my desk at work. And uh, Ultimately, I didn't do that. I don't know if I just forgot or like, I mean, it's been a while. I don't remember why I ultimately didn't do it. Maybe I thought I might get in trouble or something. Um, but now I kind of wish I had. Um, the older you get, it's not like I'm super old or anything like that, but I'm old enough to reminisce. Uh, the older you get, the more you look at um, a bunch of past opportunities that you missed. Like as a programmer, I was around, I was around before Google was even a thing. And I think I was working on like a really basic search engine, not really a search engine per se, but like a, a search feature of a directory um, before Google even existed. And you know, it's not like it's not like what I was working on would have competed with Google. They had like some really smart ideas and mine was crap. Um, but, you know, it's just kind of interesting 
that I was uh, I was dealing with search in the search engine space um, before Google was a thing, and, and I kind of feel the same way about things like um, like content management systems. I remember working on content management uh, before WordPress was ever around. Um, so you know, there's a lot of like little missed opportunities in life where you know, in hindsight, you're like, dang man, I wish I'd taken advantage of that. But you can't think about that too much, you know. Um, or else you'll go insane, or at least that's the way I look at it. It's like, if I, you know, maybe I can be smarter. The next thing that comes like, like right now, the big thing is AI, right? So like you want to jump on the AI bandwagon if you can, but then it's also like, is it a fad? Is it here to stay? Because some of these things do come and go, you know, um, you're talking about like, you know, cryptocurrency as a currency. And as a currency, yeah, sure, okay, it's got some value and stuff, and that value is going to fluctuate, and you can trade on that. But also, the whole idea is that some of this uh, crypto stuff is supposed to be for programming, you know? Like um, Ethereum, the whole thing behind Ethereum isn't the value that it has. It's supposed to be that it has utility um, as a, uh, like a carrier for smart contracts. Um, that's what... Ethereum is supposed to be about and that's what some of this other cryptocurrency is about it's supposed to be about it's, it's supposed to be about like the utility of a of a decentralized database essentially of um of uh well one data secure data and then also the ability to like kind of make transactions on that data um that are triggered by like a smart contract you don't hear a lot of that going on these days Right. So like that was supposed to be the next big thing in, in programming. Um, it, it was supposed to be like everybody's supposed to get on this uh, this Web3 uh, smart contract, uh, you know, uh, blockchain technology thing. And that's supposed to be the future. And maybe it is. I don't know. But like here we are in 2024 and I see a bunch of people like hesitant to even do that. It's like I get I get why they say it's great. I mean, it is, it is kind of cool. You know, it kind of takes the, um, um, the authority issues out of, uh, like data. Right. So like who, who owns your data? Um, you know, in a traditional database uh, system, you have like the authority of say Google or something that is, um, you know, keeping that data and, and basically maintaining it. Uh, in a blockchain, that data is distributed across the blockchain, and the blockchain itself is the authority for um, betting that um, the data is correct and, uh, like, the integrity of the uh, data. So I get all the benefits and stuff like that, but I don't see a lot of developers out there like, man, I'm just going to give up on this uh, this whole SQL uh, server uh, database or this MySQL database or, you know, all of these other database systems and stuff. It's, I don't see a bunch of people jumping on the bandwagon where it's like, I'm just going to give up on all that. And I'm just going to go all in on like blockchains. Um, I, I don't know, like maybe, maybe, maybe I'm missing something, but I haven't seen a big shift to that. Sorry, I'm getting, I'm getting into some of the, uh, the nerdiness of like some of the other things that I do that's not art related. Uh, for those of you who are here to watch the art, just tune me out. I know it's a, <laughs> like, it's sometimes I bore myself. Focus on the Higgins. <laughs> but yeah, blockchain supposed to have like this, um, this utility that I just don't see a lot of, um, a lot of uh, developers latching onto it. Now, don't get me wrong, you, you still have some, you know. You have some people out there creating um, these uh, these really great uses for uh, cryptocurrency. And, um, you know, like just crypto in general, smart contracts and all that stuff. Uh, but also it's like, man, it's just slow adoption. It really is. Because, like, one of the cool things, so, like, here's a here's a case example, and I'm sure it's been beat to death, right? But, um, so, social funding, like, um, like, Kickstarter, like, this is, this is a good case example of how, like, crypto smart contracts are supposed to work. So, like, you have a, you have a system like uh, Kickstarter, where people come in, and they fund a project, like, say, say I wanted to create an art book or something like that, right? 
and you guys are like into that and you're like you know i like jeremy i'm going to support his art book um i'm going to i'm going to fund that right um but you don't want to just throw your money at it you want to make sure that i actually complete the art book and put it out there so like your your funding of the art book is contingent upon me actually producing the art for it and like publishing it and getting all that stuff and so i i have to fulfill my obligations uh for your obligations to kick kick in right so like say you want to donate 20 bucks or something to my project um but you don't just want that 20 bucks to go to waste if the uh if the project never actually happens like i don't actually create the book or, or whatever so the idea is that you would put in twenty dollars but your twenty dollars um won't be released to me until i actually produce the book right so you can see some of the problems there right so like there's this trust thing you're you're trusting that the twenty dollars is going to sit there in kind of like escrow and you're trusting that i'm going to do my my job um and produce a book and then also i'm trusting that that twenty dollars is going to be available once I complete my book after I've already done my part, right? So there's all these trust issues there that, you know, we're human beings. We can we can work that out. Human beings can can basically trust each other. But, you know, like if you scale it up and stuff, it gets a little more complicated. So one of the great things about smart contracts and um and uh you know the the promise of of this uh ledger um like this crypto ledger and all that stuff is that in the actual ledger itself not only is it logged that there's twenty dollars available but and that it's in escrow there is a trigger built into it that like there's an actual smart program built into the ledger itself that releases that twenty dollars when the uh when the tasks are accomplished so it it's kind of hard to explain and there's like some technical stuff to it but that that's kind of the gist of it, it it's like these smart contracts have the ability to um you know free up stuff resources based on like metrics that are reached and, and so on i'm not making any sense but that's okay you guys don't care anyway i'm just filling the air um i do like all of that stuff and and but the thing is you could do all this stuff with other ways like you don't have to um you don't have to use crypto technology for that one can argue that maybe it's uh it's cost prohibitive, you know, like crypto isn't cheap. But anyway, that's some of the promises of crypto that I haven't seen um come to fruition. I would love to, but you know, like whenever I talk to my developer friends and stuff, I'm like, yeah, man, crypto is awesome. You can do all these great things and stuff like that. And they're like, yeah, but you can do that already anyway. Like, why? what's this extra stuff? And I'm like, well, it's decentralized, you know, and like, you don't have to worry about like an authority running it all, you know, like, you don't have to worry about like, whether Google's evil and, and whether Facebook has your data and all this, it's, it's all, you know, in the actual ledger. And um, they're like, yeah, but is that really a big deal? And I'm like, you know, I can't really argue with them. So I don't know, maybe that's the future, maybe it isn't, but you got to watch out for these hype trains. I, I think that's what my, uh, my overall point was. It's like, how much of it is true that there is an actual benefit there and how much is, of it is like, you know, just people, people engaging in FOMO, you know, like they don't, they don't want to miss out on the next big tech trend or, or something the next big thing that they should be investing in. But then again, like I said, which is also one of my other points is like, you go back and, and you get to a certain age and you look back at all the missed opportunities and you're like, man, I wish I had believed in that and taken advantage of that one. It would have been great. Let's see, it, it was a plot point of some movie where it's like the guy wants to go back in time and tell his former self to invest in like Yahoo or something. <laughs> Are there any AI stocks out there? Probably. I don't know. You're talking to the wrong guy. I don't know, but I'm sure there are. Well, there's there's um, companies that are doing AI that you can invest in. I don't know. I don't know what you mean by AI stocks. There are AI companies that you can invest in, I'm sure.
but certainly from a development standpoint, that's that's a buzzword that everybody's trying to, you know, figure out. Like, how can I, how can I take advantage of AI, and um, you know, it, it's kind of scary though because AI is one of those things that can actually like, you know, legitimately replace people, replace people's livelihoods, you know. Because the problem is, um, when it comes to art, like, I mean, this is an art show, so let's talk about AI from, like, an art standpoint. Um, the problem is that you can, you know, say you're making a blog post or, you know, you're making a poster for a movie or something like that. And um, you, you have some photos that you took. While filming that movie, yeah, let's go with the uh, movie poster because that's probably one we can all re understand. So you have some shots from your movie. You filmed your movie and all that stuff, and you've got your actors and everything in there. And you're like, hmm, i got to create this movie poster. So do I go to my in-house graphic artist who is going to, you know, rely on their their um, skills that they've learned while in school and stuff on how to use Photoshop and, and so on. And, you know, they went to art school, so they know all about like layout. They know all about composition. They know all about, um, you know, creating balance in their picture and driving the uh, viewer's eyes to certain parts that they want uh, the person to pay attention to. They know all these things because they went to school and all that stuff. Do you go to that in-house graphic artist that you're paying, I don't know, like $100,000 per year to, or probably less? Or do you crank up your computer and say, look, I want, I want you to use this clip and create a movie poster for me. And five minutes later, you have a movie poster. And because it was programmed in all of those principles of design, you have a very nice aesthetic movie poster, uh, obeys all the rules of design. Um, you know, maybe it's a little slightly generic. Maybe it's not. Maybe it, uh, maybe it's really cool. Maybe it's a little generic. Maybe it needs a little tinkering and stuff, but you know, Hey, you only put five minutes worth of work into it. That's the future we're looking at. So it probably isn't quite there yet, but probably in the next couple of years, yeah, they're going to stop hiring graphic artists. Now, will there always be traditional artists uh, to, to, you know, draw somebody's dog and stuff like that? Yeah, probably. Will people always appreciate actual artisanship? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, this is... This is a pretty cool thing that people can do. You know, you can sit down with a pencil and piece of paper and create something out of nothing. Um, that's that's always going to fascinate people. But also, can a computer do that? Yeah, yeah, a computer can do that now too. I don't know where that leads us, guys. So it's, it's a weird world we live in. So I do think a lot of the um, the traditional simple. You know, hey, can you create me a, a poster real quick? Or, hey, can you create me this graphic for this um, for this news broadcast? You know, like, there, there's an art department that creates those uh, graphics that you see on the uh, the news um, every night and, and so on. <clears throat> those guys are probably going to be replaced by computers. By those guys, I mean, you know, girls too. So... Yeah, that's probably where we're where we're at, you know. Um, Larry says I'm very old fashioned. If it's in my hand, I own it. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Traditional, like a lot of what I do is actually like, um, you know, kind of like a protest because I I understand the technology. I see I see the benefits of the technology, but also some of it and part of it, I'm like, I recoil in horror from it. <laughs> So some of this is just protest. I like the tangibleness of this piece of paper. I like this pencil in my hand. I, I love it. Um, BIC says, what companies does anyone in the chat know? Um, uh, who's behind ChatGPT? Uh, there's some recent news about them. I forget the name of the company. I'll look that up for you. 
Oh, Lorraine's got it on it. There you go. So I, I probably, I, I, I think I need to throw out disclaimers. This is not an investment show. <laughs> like if you're picking up tips from the chat, that's all on you. I, I have nothing to do with that. So like if you make your investments because like you, you saw something mentioned in, in a uh, art chat, then um, uh, you're a brave person. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it, it is, it is interesting. It, it really is. Um, but I also, I, I, I don't want to give up. I don't want to, I don't want to bemoan everything. I don't, I don't want to sit there and be like the guy who's like, oh, the sky is falling. It's the end of the world as we know it. Things suck. Why do we even get out of bed in the morning? I don't want to be that guy. I, I actually, I actually think we'll work this out. I don't know how, but we are pretty creative people. And I think as some, you know, somehow, some way we're going to make it work. I mean, it's not like, it's not like art is, art's just, you know, one of many uh, industries that are being disrupted. I just feel kind of bad for art because it's not like, you know, that whole starving artist trope is, it's not that you know, unrealistic. Um, it's not like artists and stuff. Uh, we're in a great position where, you know, a disruption to them and stuff is just going to be like, it's not like, it's not like um, the transition from like coal to like solar power or whatever the hell we're coming up with nowadays. Or, you know, um, I feel like the coal industry made a lot of money back in the day and stuff, and maybe they can kind of weather it when during that transition. It's not like artists are in that position, you know, artists, uh, you know, like <laughs> the artists were never like uh, a really lucrative job to begin with. Um, most of the uh, commercial artists that I know of, like graphic artists and so on, they they probably get paid like just above minimum wage. It's not, um, you know, like, and it's sad too. I, I feel like their skill set and stuff should be honored. It's, it's just not, I don't know. I don't, I don't know, like, what my point is there. Um, but I do think that, I do think that we'll solve these, these problems. And we'll figure out how to transition into something new. And uh, people, you know, people adapt. You know, the kids and stuff growing up nowadays that are interested in art, they're going to find some way to fit themselves in. People can't help but be creative, you know? The <laughs> kids like, all that stuff is great to me. <laughs> hey, Mama Q. I like that. Greetings, right brain friends. That's a, so Yeah, that's a good way to put it. So, like, you know the right brain people, the creative people out there, they're going to find some outlet for their creativity. It doesn't matter whether or not there's computers out there that can do art or, you know, whatever. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. There is a place for human beings in this world and they will create regardless. It's not like, it's not like, um, they're just going to stop. So here's a, here's a, a good way to look at it. So like people are stressing out over like AI art, right? Well, you know, computers have been somewhat able to make music for a while now, right? You still have musicians out there. You still have, like, I think I would be the equivalent of the the guy at the open mic at your uh, your neighborhood coffee shop or, or bar or something like that who's, like, strumming on a guitar. Well, that's kind of, like, the role I play in, in creating art. I'm not... I'm not doing it as a, as a job. I'm not doing it as like a profession or anything like that. I'm just having fun, right? Well, you know, you're always going to have those guys out there, you know, strumming on a guitar. It's going to be the same with art. You know, you're always going to have somebody drawing just for the sake of drawing. Man, that's going anywhere. So, I don't know. People fret about all kinds of stuff, and then you know they they adapt because you have to. You have to adapt. If you don't adapt, you die.
And, um, you know, um, some of the stuff uh, kids are into nowadays is like, so there's, there's different, there's different ways that you can apply your art as well. So like, yeah, um, I was looking into animation lately because I noticed that like a lot of um, the people that I subscribe to and who also watch my show, they, for some reason, like um, uh, multiple of them are into like animation and stuff like that. So uh, I've done some animation in the past. So I was thinking about like, you know, dusting off <laughs> my my skills in, in terms of animation and stuff and like kind of seeing what's out there as far as like a tutorial, um, like a digital tutorial of like um, doing like animation and so, and so on. Um, so that that's an example of, uh, I think, where, um, you know, something you do can be done in a different way. So it's still drawing, but you're also like doing the bit where you're animating and, and, and so on. So like, you know, that's a, that's one way to um, to kind of adapt. So like, you know, maybe in, in the near future, AI will be able to do like all the animation as well. But for now, at least, they're probably struggling a little bit with that. I, I have no idea. I don't know. What the, I don't want to know what the solution is. I got to get into some of this body down here so that I can get all this done. So what's a good word, uh, Mama Q? How's that? How's life treating you? We've been talking about um, technology and AI and how it might change the art world. I think it's a big unknown, to be honest. I think it's it's definitely something to keep track of, but I don't know. I don't know how it's going to affect things in the future. I think if you're um, you're looking to become like a professional artist, you may you may want to uh, give that some thought. For sure, how that might affect you. If you're already a professional artist, <laughs> good luck, guys. <laughs> Oh, thanks, Hater. Uh, so Hater says, um, yeah, they do use AI in movie making now, uh, Lorraine. Uh, I've noticed that. Uh, so Hater says, I believe I will gain a wealth of vintage knowledge about computing from meeting you in person, Jeremy. That's a very nice way of saying you're old, Jeremy. <laughs> vintage knowledge of computers. <laughs> It's a very nice way of saying, uh, yeah, yeah, you you've been around the block a little bit. I bet you, uh, bet you got some old school knowledge there because you're old. I'm not that old. I've been around for a little while though. Sketching in some of this body on this doggy. Yeah, I think Higgins is just like a super cute dog. Um, I think it's purebred Janet Russell, but it could be wrong. So I gotta get I gotta get the collars in here, and I think that's going to be a bit of a challenge. Let's see what colors do I want to try? I'm gonna try this one. But yeah. I like a, uh, I like Higgins. I had a dog once. Well, it wasn't my dog. It was my parents' dog. There was a Jack Russell Corgi mix, and he was super cute. Let's see, I think I, so. There's also like a ribbon here, if you remember from the um, from the um reference photo. But I think I'm gonna leave that off. I'm just gonna do the core um harness here. I think they decorated with the ribbon for like, I don't know, I want to say July 4th or something like that. That's what it looks like in the photo. 
but I'm just going to ignore that and I'm going to do like a blue harness here. Just to make this simplify it a little bit, make it easier on my hand in my end. Both of your dogs now have floppy ears. That's cute. What kind of dogs do you have, uh, Larry? I don't think you've uh I don't think I've seen your dogs. Yeah, what's up with that? Like most people share their dogs with me. You're holding out on me, Larry. What what kind of dogs you got? Thanks, Lorraine. Yeah, um, Jack Russell's, they're, they're made for, like, sheep herding, I think. Like, they're farm dogs, you know. Um, my parents' dog, uh, they had some acres out in the woods and stuff with, like, a little bit of a prairie bit. And that dog would just, like, bounce up and down through the uh, tall grass and everything like that. It was super cute. Yeah, they're, they're designed to be, like, prairie dogs. Not actual prairie dogs, but you you know what I'm saying. They're supposed to be out there rounding up the uh, the animals, the sheep and cows and stuff, like sheep dogs, I guess. That's my understanding, at least. So one of the drawbacks to colored pencils is it does take a little bit more time than um, you know some of the other mediums. That's what sucks about it. Like I feel like I don't know. Maybe it's just because I'm taking my time tonight, but it seems like I'm making uh, less progress than what I would normally make. Yeah, I thought it was July 4th. Yeah, uh, I did notice the, uh, yeah, the Transylvania uh, uh, building in the back. Uh, I don't I don't remember what building that is, but they have their pumpkin fest there, too. But yeah, I, I did recognize the building. And I kind of guessed that it was uh, July 4th. I didn't, do they have like a concert down there or something? Oh, yeah, you said it was a concert. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm half reading the chat. A red bone coon hound has a super long eared bandit. Oh, neat. Cool. Oh, Mama Q did say uh, one college kid is about to graduate and one is about to start radiology school. Awesome. Congratulations. You must be super proud. Yeah, like a little paw on the um uh collar thing here. Make sure I put in the right amount of paw stuff. I do like this little uh thing here. Okay, so I'll make that look a little bit better. Leader. Just want to make sure that that's in there so that I kind of know where to put in the rest of this. So I'm kind of guessing what's behind this ribbon. I, I feel like this will be close enough, but oh well. So what's cool about this dog is I can probably work it out to where I can go and play with the uh, Higgins in person. It's just fun. It's nice to do a portrait and then you get to see the dog. Zeus or Heinz 57, mostly Stratfordshire, has short floppy ears. I love floppy eared dogs. When they have the pointy ears, I like to go like this and like rub them. Um, but I, I really like the uh, floppy eared dogs. 
my uh, rabbit has floppy ears as well, and I, I just adore it. I always call uh, my rabbit floppy-eared bastard. <laughs> Bit of a little buckle there. And then there's a leash that kind of comes off here, but I'll I'll worry about that later. I feel like I barely have a dog in here so far, and like I've been drawing for over an hour. Um, so somewhere down in here. I think hard to tell. Dogs would be great if they were all short haired. Um all one color. <laughs> and you didn't have to draw all of the um all of the attachments. Uh I feel the same way about like horses. Like horses are fun to draw until you get into the tech. And you have to draw all of the, you know, the bridle and, you know, the saddles and all of that stuff. And then it becomes like, oh, geez, there's like so much here. Um, like, I, I've talked about that before where, um, oh, one second. Uh, some of the challenges of being an artist is, uh, you know, you have to know at least a little bit about all these different things, right? So you have to know a little bit about the anatomy of a dog, right? Like, you don't have to be an expert on the anatomy of a dog. You don't have to be like a veterinarian or something like that. But you have to basically know that, yeah, this is like how the dog's cheek works, you know? You have to have that basic knowledge. But then also you have to be like knowledgeable about dog fashion, right? So like you have to know about dog collars and you know all these other little things that have nothing to actually do with the dog itself it's just you know the owner has a collar that has like a little thing on it and then also the harness because this dog's out in, in public going for a walk um it's just fascinating to me all the little extra things like and um i i made that observation back when i was doing like a you know some watercolors of like women wearing dresses and stuff. Uh, you, you're not only expected to know like, you know, figure and, and bones and all the, you know, the muscles and stuff like that that make up a human body, but also you have to know about like dresses and, you know, which dresses are appropriate to wear in modern times and which ones make a look like it's from the Victorian era. Uh, just a lot of little things that you have to know as an artist. And this is actually one of the cool things about being an artist that has nothing to do with any of the other stuff that we've been talking about tonight. So like, we've been largely talking about like careers and like things like that, that may go away because of um, AI or computers or something like that. But here's the thing, um, art is an observation tool will never go away. So like, I am learning a lot about a dog by drawing a dog, that sort of stuff that has, that has a really rich history. Like if you go back and you look at like old scientific journals and stuff like that from like scientists, they're, they're filled with drawings and illustrations and so on. Um, because that was the way that the scientists learned about, um, the thing that they were studying is they drew pictures of them, you know, what better way to learn. Um, I don't feel like any of that's ever going away. You know, you still draw a dog to learn about a dog. I know that sounds weird, but, you know, and not everybody does that. I'm just saying that they're like, there's a benefit in drawing a dog that you may not pick up on unless you actually do it. You know, as you're doing it, you're making all these ob different observations about the dog. It, it's, it's so weird. I know. It's hard to explain, but yeah. Um, all of these little benefits of being an artist that like often go unstated.
or just being interested in art. And, it, you know, it's the same whether you're drawing a dog or whether you're drawing a person or whether you're just drawing it. You're standing on the street corner and, and you're drawing a street scene or something like that. You're making observations as you're doing it. And, and it's kind of cool. Oh, yay. Kevin says I get to meet Higgins. Woohoo. That's awesome. Um, because I can says I haven't had a drop of alcohol in two months. I am sorry. <laughs> I feel bad for you. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, good job. Congratulations. Um, I know that some people like struggle with alcohol and like, they really have to like make an effort not to drink and stuff like that. And I, I totally respect that. And, uh, I applaud that like, good job. Seriously. I've had some friends that struggled with, uh, alcohol, uh, issues and stuff. And, um, uh, I will be the first to congratulate you. But also, I might make a joke like, <laughs> like, oh man, that must suck. <laughs> but no, I totally get it. Um, I've been trying to give up a few things myself, like, uh, I've got a pizza habit. I really like pizza. <laughs> I've been trying to eat less pizza lately. <laughs> Like, pizza's just the perfect meal, you know? And it's like, it's just so hard to give up. I like pizza. I like pizza. I like sandwiches. I like convenient food. Um, I like tacos. I like things that just kind of come in, you know, like a hand-sized something. So that's my bad habit I'm trying to work on. I would eat at least at least a store bought pizza a, a week. That's not very healthy. <laughs> uh, hater, I don't have that kind of money. I just play around at this point and make it lose twenty to thirty bucks. Oh, uh, yeah, so I, I, I do have a comment on that. So, like, that's what I was kind of doing when I was trying to day trade uh, crypto. So, like, I was trying to um, I was trying to trade on that level, like make 20, 30 bucks uh, per day, just trading like um, a little bit and stuff like that. Let me tell you why that's a bad idea. So I was doing this day trading thing for at least a year and everything. And then at the end of the year, you got to file taxes and um for some reason they want every single uh crypto transaction now so like if you're day trading crypto where you're like buying and selling on a daily basis which i was i mean i wasn't making a lot of money it was just like you know like ten dollars here twenty dollars there and stuff like that it, you know it was fun um but at the end of the year you've got to like send all that in to the IRS and it, it was just ridiculous. It was like pages upon pages of like all these transactions and stuff. It was a little bit embarrassing to be honest. So I don't recommend that. I don't know if you have to do that with like day trading on, um, you know, stocks or, or something like that, but certainly on uh, crypto you, you, and there's tools for, for like, uh, importing that. So like you can import that into your tax return. Um, and that definitely helps, but it's still embarrassing, like to see that many transactions and stuff like that. <clears throat> and also, you take a you take a penalty if uh, if you don't hold it long enough. Um, you know, short term versus long term gains. I'm not an expert on any of this stuff. I'm just saying that, like, you know, there are benefits to not day trading crypto. That's all I'm saying. The tax man will come. Yes, Lorraine. The tax man will come. Um, and I, I think that's like in recent years, the burden of uh, reporting your your crypto as uh, like they've really clamped down on that because a lot of people are using it as like a um, yeah, you have to list every trade exactly. And um, I was never making very much money on it, so it just became like uh, it just became a pain for me. 
like literally the paperwork, the time I spent on the paperwork was way worth, like I would have paid somebody every little bit that I had earned doing this just to not have to do that paperwork. It was ridiculous. And I, I think, I think the paperwork's gotten worse over the past couple of years. Again, I'm not an expert um, on it, but my understanding is that the uh, the tax laws on crypto has has changed over the last couple of years, just because like people were kind of using it as like a uh, like a tax shelter, even though they shouldn't have. And now I think uh, the requirement for reporting is a uh, work like you know you have more burden, I guess. I don't know. I don't I don't do it anymore. So like. Um, I, I don't know what the current burden is. I mean, I'm talking about like a couple of years back. A couple of years back, I was uh, probably during COVID, um, during 2020, when things were like kind of volatile and uh, had a little bit of free time to watch it during the daytime. So I would like, you know, buy and buy in a dip and then, you know, let it go up by like 5% and then sell it and, I thought, man, I'm awesome. I'm making all this money and stuff. Nah, I'm just making a few pennies here and there and end up having to pay like crap ton of taxes on it. I have to do all that paperwork. And then eventually the bottom dropped out on it and lost all that money anyway. So I've got, I think at this point I've got, uh, who mentioned SHIB? Um, BIC did. Yeah, I have some SHIB just because it was super cheap. I've got some Litecoin. I might have some Solana left, but I think I ended up getting rid of that. I don't know. I just don't have very much luck when it comes to that stuff. I never make any money off of it. I just lose money slowly. It's like when I go to like a casino. I've never walked into a casino where I left with money. No, I, I, lo I leave with money, but I don't earn any money. <laughs> like, like basically, I just lose money slowly in a casino. Which, I've gotten good at that. I, I you know, the, my first time in a casino, I didn't know what was going on. Um, but I have gotten better at that. Like, um, I've, did, I've done some research on different games to play and, and things like that. Um, so, I feel like I've gotten better at uh surviving a casino like i feel like i can go into a casino now with i don't know like 500 bucks or something like that and probably leave with at least 250 to 300 which is not bad considering i used to really suck bad at it and not leave with any money but um i will never i will never walk into a casino with 500 bucks and leave with 510 dollars it's just not going to happen I don't have the luck for it. I have terrible luck. But I do have some favorite games. Um, you know, my uh, my take on casinos is probably the same as my take on trading crypto. Um, it's fun. Do it if you enjoy it. Be careful because you are just as likely to lose it as you are to gain anything from it. And, um, you know, I look at it as like an entertainment expense. So maybe not so much with crypto, but certainly with the casino. So like you go to a casino, like you go to Las Vegas. Um, I've gone to Las Vegas uh, for conferences in the past. Um, and... You know, I'm I'm required to be there for like a week for the uh, for the conference, and and the thing is that you're in Las Vegas, you have to you basically have to participate in the casinos. Like, what else are you going to do, right? Um, so, if you look at it as like an entertainment expense, like if you look at it as like, okay, I'm I'm in Las Vegas, I have to do something with my time. If I lose like a hundred bucks a night. Well, that's a hundred bucks I would have spent on entertainment anyway. If you look at it from that standpoint, it's not so bad, you know. There's a subtle art to losing money, is what I'm getting at. That's the book I would write. Where, where's Packer Jack? That's the book I'm going to write. It's like the subtle art of losing money. I don't think I ever get ahead in life. I just, 
I just get behind very slowly. <laughs> I would I would love to actually get ahead in life. That would be great. <laughs> oh, what are you guys talking about now? Crypto tax isn't uh, that rough in in the UK. Um, pay twenty percent on Bitcoin. I feel like taxes are just so different in the UK, anyway. Like, like it, it might not feel that different to you guys because maybe you guys have more taxes than we have here. I'm, I'm not really sure. I know that you guys have like a lot better social institutions, like you know, like healthcare things like that. Um, so you guys probably have more taxes that pay for that. I really don't know, but that would be my guess. Here in America, we don't like any taxes. <laughs> if you tax us on anything, we're going to complain about it. Even, even if, even if we deserve to be taxed on something, like we're actually getting a fair exchange for like, I like driving around on roads, right? And I, I prefer roads without potholes. And I know in the back of my mind that my taxes go to pay for those uh, potholes and uh, fixing those and replacing those and stuff like that. But when it comes time to pay the taxes, I'm not thinking of potholes. I'm thinking of how much money is coming out of my wallet. And I'm going to complain about it, even though I really shouldn't be complaining because I do like this sort of like, you know, infrastructure type things that taxes go for. This guy's looking cute. Hey, Kevin, uh, you're a degenerate sports gambler. Did you catch that Saturday Night Live clip the other day where they were talking about um, um, the sports betting app where it's like uh, where you're betting on your friends and like losing all their money? That was so good. If you haven't seen it, I, I suggest it. It's, it's really good. Saturday Night Live is hit or miss, but sometimes they have some really good stuff. This guy's looking cute. So the the idea is that, like you keep going over the same spots over and over again until like these guys, like all of this is filled in and it's looking realistic. Um, I probably will, and I I don't have any solvent um, with me. So I think after I'm done with this tonight. I'll go back and kind of like smooth out some of these uh these rough areas where it looks sketched and kind of blend it in with um so what you can do with like uh, so these are prisma color uh colored pencils right so they're wax based um you can use like acetone to kind of um blend some of these areas in yeah it's so funny the uh the saturday night live thing anybody who does sports gambling should go and watch that clip it, it's hilarious they, they really nailed it on that one um, because there are some friends of mine that do sports gambling and I do kind of want to bet on whether or not they're going to like, like whether or not they're going to survive, you know, with love, but um, hater says greed has effectively destroyed the essence of cryptocurrencies concept. I've managed to avoid any financial losses by consistently buying and never selling anything stake and, uh, and wait, hold, hold on. Yeah. So like if, if you can, um, just hold forever, um, you know, you're probably going to be okay. Cause like, I mean, I guess the, the whole point, um, the whole way to survive really uh crypto ups and downs is to just kind of like be in it for the long haul so obviously people who bought you know were early adopters of uh bitcoin you know they're probably doing very well right now and if they just kind of hold on for ever they'll even do better I mean, that's, that's usually the case. Again, I, I'm not here to give you guys any kind of investment advice, but I mean, the longer you can hold on to something in any kind of investment and stuff, I mean, obviously that's going to, that's going to pay off. I guess there's probably some exceptions to that where like you probably shouldn't hold on too long for some things, but 
just generally speaking, probably the longer you hold on to something, the better you're going to be. So I got to put in some sort of background back here just to kind of like, um, he's a white dog, so. I don't feel like I'm making a ton of progress on this picture tonight. Um, I feel like this is one that I'm going to have to continue working with. Like, I've got the basics of a dog in here, but I, it doesn't feel very refined to me yet. I think I've just been enjoying the conversation with you guys more than actually producing a picture. Oh, I got another little buckle here. Again, it is kind of interesting all the different details on on these uh, on these harnesses and stuff that you have to get in here. Yeah, I would love to. Um, I know a lot of people just really live by investing in um, crypto, but. Again, you know, back to the technology side of it, I uh, I was very fascinated by the utilitarian uh, promise of um, crypto in general. So, like, again, it's not meant to just be, like, some of them, like Bitcoin, is, it's supposed to be, like, you know, for investments. Um, but the other cryptos, like uh, Ethereum, uh, there's quite a few others, uh, you know, they are supposed to have utilitarian uses. Like, you know, data transfers and, and so on. And um, the whole point behind, um, you know, the blockchain is that it's supposed to ensure uh, the integrity of the data that's on the chain. Now, I don't know where that stuff's going, but that's the that's the stuff that they were promising. It's supposed to be like, you know, world changing. I haven't seen it. Like the whole idea behind Bitcoin is um Oh thanks, uh Kevin. I appreciate that. I mean the the whole idea behind uh Bitcoin is that it, it is supposed to be like um better than cash you know like that's a that's what they say um and the reason why is because like it is decentralized you know uh it is not dependent upon i don't know like i, I guess the dollar is supposed to be dependent upon gold or or something like that uh bitcoin is supposed to be different <laughs> i don't know exactly how i'm not an expert but I haven't, I've yet to see any of that stuff. It just seems like it's just like this thing that people want to trade. And um, I, haven't, I haven't seen it deliver on any of the uh, promises of um, being, you know, like world changing from like a technological standpoint. Yeah, it sounds like you're in a good position there, uh, uh, Hater. I would love to have them like crypto of that sort. I, I don't. I don't have anything like that. Um, again, I, I have not been lucky in life to where I can look back and say, man, I'm so happy that I did that or something like that. Um, probably there's a, there's a lot more things that I regret not doing than things I do regret um, or don't regret. Whatever. You, you know what I'm saying. I would love to have some Bitcoin, is what I'm saying. I'm going to I'm gonna um, do drawings for Bitcoin. That's, that's going to be my thing. <laughs> Cryptocurrency is all about uh, your money, your rules. Yeah, I mean, I guess to a good degree. And, uh... It is supposed to be different. I don't know if that's manifest yet. 
Like, for one thing, it's still way too volatile to be, a, a, like, a, any serious... I don't know. You can lose your money just as easily as you can gain money off of that stuff, you know? Like, just having Bitcoin doesn't, isn't, like, guaranteed to, like... I don't, I don't think it's going to drop to zero at this point. That would be odd. That would be very odd. But, you know... I also don't trust, um, I don't trust, you know, like you have whales in this, in this stuff that could just like gank their money. I don't think that's going to happen on Bitcoin, but certainly on some of the uh, smaller cryptocurrencies, some of the more boutique uh, ones, um, there is always a risk of that, you know, like, like I was saying with Solana, I had a shit ton of Solana, but, um, you know, there, that was tied to that, what is it, the FTX? thing whatever whatever thing failed and somehow it got lumped in with it and it didn't drop to zero but man it dropped heavy and it's like you know that wiped out like a lot of my uh my value that i had i mean it's not like i ever invested a lot to begin with it was just you know a couple of hundred dollars but it it wiped that out pretty quick <laughs> Now, that's not Bitcoin, that's just Solana. But still, I mean, you know, Solana looked pretty solid. I wanted Solana just so that I can use it for development. I, I was going to uh, develop against Solana. Because Solana is one of the uh, ones that uh, does use smart contracts. It, it's like an alternative to using um, Ethereum, which is a lot more expensive. So that was my idea. You know, I was going to I was going to create some smart contracts and You know, have some fun with it, but then, hey, guess what? Somebody was doing something wrong, and it crashed, and guess what? You have to suffer because you thought it was a good idea, and some other guy decided to go buy a Lambo. <laughs> That's the problem. There's some sketchy characters in crypto. Yeah, there, there you go. That, that, that probably sums up my thoughts on it. There are some sketchy people in crypto. Yes, uh, yes, hater. I, I'm definitely looking at it from um, like a developer standpoint, which is probably not the uh, the way that most people look at it. I, I really want. I, I like the promise of crypto from a developer standpoint. I, I wanted to do stuff with it. I like the idea. I bought into the idea. Yeah, uh, that's a good way to put it. I bought into the idea that crypto or not, not crypto necessarily, but um, I bought into the idea that um, uh, blockchain could be used for utilitarian purposes and that you could put smart contracts on the blockchain and use that to, um, you know, add some value as far as like integrity on the actual contract itself, the transactions, what triggered them, um, and so on. Like some, some of you guys uh, are into like treasure hunting. So imagine a treasure, there's a good example of like uh, how to explain the utilitarian benefit of um, blockchain, right? So imagine you are a uh, treasure hunter, right? And by treasure hunter, I mean somebody who wants to participate in a puzzle uh, for profit, right? So, like, you get you get some sort of reward out of it for participating in this treasure hunt, right? And let's say that the treasure hunt is um, that you're supposed to solve some puzzle. And when you solve that puzzle, it triggers a smart contract that pays out um, your, your, your money, the money you earned, you know, because you solved that puzzle. Whatever the puzzle may be, I mean, it could be, it could be cryptographic, or it could just be like you enter the right keywords, or whatever, whatever the case may be. Um, so, the integrity. So the the good thing behind um, uh, using blockchain for that is that the blockchain allows you to look and see that the money that you're supposed to earn as a treasure hunter for solving that poem, uh, like that poem or that puzzle or whatever it is, um, is there, right? So like it's on the ledger, you can go and verify that it's there. 
Uh, you don't have to guess. You don't have to rely on somebody's word. The the payout is there. You know, you, you can go and look at it. Um, you know, maybe it's uh, some technical technological hurdles that you have to jump through, but you at least know that uh, it can be verified that the the funds are there. So the prize the prize is verifiable, right? And then also you don't have to worry about some treasure hunt creator um, paying you what you earned. Uh, say if you solve the puzzle too early, right? So like one of the the things that suck about these uh, modern treasure hunts is that you know they're for profit. So the the guy wants to make money off of it. So they might put in some sort of like time time blocking bit or something like that to to you know make sure that they get paid before um, the treasure hunt is over. So you know you don't have to trust that the treasure hunter is or the treasure hunt creator is going to pay you uh, and you know using blockchain it, it's there the smart contract has a built in that it's going to release the money to you if you solve the puzzle and everything about it is on the up and up that's what's great about it i like that that kind of um technology i i like that the promise of that technology in, in fact, that's probably what I was going to build. I, I was still kind of on the fence about what I was going to do with my Solana, but that was kind of like where I was leaning. I was I was thinking about creating a treasure hunt, um, where you solve the puzzle and in exchange for solving that puzzle, uh, you got paid, you know, Solana, and uh, well, basically you got paid in crypto. And, um, you know, you can exchange that for whatever you want. You can exchange that for cash. You can exchange it for Bitcoin. That's entirely up to you. But, you know, you solve the treasure hunt and you get paid in crypto. So I like ideas like that. I like that kind of like um, utilitarian use of uh, crypto. I think that's kind of cool. That said, you know, Solana took a dump and... Uh, Kind of, I'm like, well, I probably got better ways to spend my time. <laughs> I love that you guys are really into this topic. That's kind of cool. I wish I knew more about it. I, I wish I could speak, um, you know, more intelligently about it. But uh, to Hater's point, yeah, I kind of look at it from like a developer standpoint because I, I know that you could use um, blockchain for some really cool stuff. So that's the way I look at it. Like other people probably look at it from different standpoints. And that's all valid. I mean, that that's what's kind of cool about, you know, this technology is that it can be a currency. It can be a, you know, a way of doing things like smart contracts and can be a store of value it can be like a store of data it's a lot of a lot of different things at once so i don't know what i want as a background i'm gonna have to decide that later there's a lot more i'm gonna have to do on this i don't know where i got off track tonight but this is like not half as finished as i thought it might be Like usually within two hours, I'm I'm able to get a lot done. I don't know where I went off on the. I don't know where this got away from me. I mean, it still looks cool. It just doesn't look finished. I do want to try to like do some of the blending. I think. See if I can use like a regular blending tool. See how this works. So you can you can use a regular blending tool to kind of burnish these things in, but it only works to a certain degree without um, you know actually using some sort of solvent to kind of like get in there and you got to get between the tooth of the paper and. I'm sure this looks fine enough on camera because like this isn't the best camera, but to me, it still looks kind of grainy and it still looks kind of sketched and it doesn't look quite as uh, finished as I want it to be. 
But again, Kevin Kevin doesn't care. Like I can I can spend another month on this picture and he wouldn't care. Um, I hope <laughs> like I'm speaking for him, <laughs> like he's not here. But yeah, I'll, I'll continue tinkering with this picture. I love this dog's nose though. He's got he's got a boopable nose, like you just want to boop. I felt like if I had done this in uh, pastel, it would have gone quicker. It seems like colored pencils take longer than some of the other mediums. So who asked that earlier? Uh, because I can ask that earlier. Um, you know, what are some of the differences in switching back and forth from different mediums? I feel like I feel like I should plan ahead, and if I'm going to use um, colored pencils, I need to realize that, like, it's going to take a lot more time. It's going to take more time to get a realistic picture out of it than if I was doing uh, pastels, because pastels are so easy to kind of, like, blend. Although, this is working pretty nice. I like this. It's a pretty dog. Yep. Yes, yes. So I probably should have done some of this smoothing earlier because I, I do like this effect. I just love how, like, sometimes we're talking about movies in here. Uh, like, sometimes we're talking about, I don't know, like some weird conspiracy. I mean, we started talking about D.B. Cooper earlier, and now we're talking about crypto. I just love how the conversations just go all over the place in here. You guys are the best audience. I, I really appreciate that you guys hang out with me. Um. I got to say, that's one of the reasons why I look forward to this is because you never know. <laughs> you never know what we're going to be talking about. Like, we might be talking about art. We might be talking about something that has nothing to do with art. I love it. Um, and I, I never know who's going to show up. Like, um, each of you guys have different things you guys bring to the table. So, like, um, some of you guys uh, have been in here talking about UFOs in the past. I love that, you know, like X-Files type uh, stuff. And, you know, some of you guys, um, uh, some of you guys I know from like the Forest Fen treasure hunt. So like uh, you guys come in here and you guys talk about that kind of stuff. Um, there is a new treasure hunt coming up. It's multi-million dollars, by the way. Uh, that's coming out in October where it's another one of those book type things. And, um, you know, like the the guy has a picture of all the different stuff that's in the uh, in the treasure that you're supposed to uh, be able to find, and uh, people have done you know the due diligence on looking up all these different items. It's well over like you know one million dollars worth of stuff, so that's kind of cool. Um, oh, thanks, Lorraine. Yeah, uh, yeah. So like, um, you know. I appreciate you saying that, Lorraine, because like I, I do feel like it's a, uh, it, you know, like I can roll with whatever you guys are talking about. Like I, I love it. Like whatever you guys want to talk about, it's totally fine with me. It's actually one of the things I look forward to. It's like such a variety of things that we're talking about. How <laughs> about the moon landing? <laughs> uh, there was no moon landing, Larry. <laughs> like that was created in a Hollywood basement. It's a bunch of artists creating like fake moon uh, craters. That's what that's what I have to say about the moon landing. I'm just kidding. I believe in the moon landing. I just love some of the conspiracies though that people come up with because it's so it's so so crazy. Like I don't I don't want to call these people ridiculous because like some of these people actually believe it. So I don't want to I don't want to disparage them in any way. But it is kind of weird when people believe in like things like the moon landing is a hoax or, or like they believe in um, you know like a flat Earth or or something like that. It's just so bizarre to me that I 
deep down inside, I think that they were like joking, like they're not, they don't seriously believe that. But then I talked to them and some people really do believe these things, you know, like on the, uh, on the Forrest Finn thing, there are some people out there who still believe that there's like a second treasure to find or that the original treasure was never found or that there's like some crazy conspiracy involved in that. I mean, who am I to say? I really don't know. I'm just, it, it's just like odd to me. And, you know, some of these things I would think are kind of ridiculous. Some of the ideas that people come up with, but, you know, I don't want to disparage it because like, people actually do believe these things. So like, who am I to judge? You know, I really don't know. So like, if I don't know, who am I to judge about, you know, I don't know, like UFOs or aliens or whatever, you know? <laughs> I just think it's fun to talk about, you know? Like, I don't really believe in ghosts, right? But I'm the first person to think it's fun to hang out in, like, uh, an old house or something like that and, you know, wonder if, like, it's haunted. I, I, don't, I don't know if, like, it really is haunted or whatever, but it's still fun. Um, yeah, so who am I to judge, really? I think it does look better blended, but it's still not where I want it to be. It looks looks a little bit more finished <laughs> than what I... Poor Higgins here needs some more work. I need to put in some background. So I think I'm going to actually... I think I am going to put in some watercolor. So the, the problem is I need to make a distinction between the background and the white of... Because like most of Higgins is white. Like his chest, his face, and so on. So I have to make some sort of distinction between... Higgins' body and the background behind him. So um, that is something that I'm going to have to continue working with. I had a black pencil around here somewhere. I'm going to put that. There it is. All right, cool. Pretty windy on the moon. <laughs> oh, what are you guys talking about? Let's see. Um, this JP Morgan, uh, talk session has been greatly overshadowed by the, it has greatly overshadowed the art stream. Nah, this is only partly an art stream. It's also, uh, hanging out with you guys, you know, I mean, I, I like to think that we're like a community, right? So like part of it is, um, yeah, you know, we're drawing a picture, but also we're hanging out talking. Psycho dog. Um. <laughs> Let's see. I'm very happy on Earth. Good, Larry. I don't want to go to Mars. I haven't seen this world. Man. You know, I get nervous on a plane. I couldn't imagine a trip to Mars. There are, um, so they put out a couple of years back. I don't know if it went anywhere, but they put out a like a request for people to sign up for a trip to Mars. Nope. That would not be me. Could you imagine? It's a one way trip guys. Like, could you imagine signing up for like, I mean, it would be kind of cool to be on a Mars mission because like that guarantees that you're going to be like entered into like the historical record, having done something really amazing, but also it's a one way trip. You're never coming back. You know, you're just basically a Martian then at that point. I don't know. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it, guys. The moon landing was indeed authentic and America deserves our utmost gratitude for accomplishing such a remarkable feat. I agree. Not everybody does, but I agree. <laughs> Yeah, it is pretty cool. Um, I think it'd be kind of cool, like, if we do go back there. It, it seems kind of weird that we haven't been back to the moon in quite some time. I feel like that's something that is doable. I don't know why they stopped doing it. I'll tell you what's weird. It's weird to look up at the sky 
um, on a clear night and see the moon and think somebody was up there, you know, like, again, like I said, I have trouble on planes, you know, like I, I hate being on a plane for like a significant period of time. Imagine being on like a, uh, was it, would it take them a couple of weeks or like at least a week or something to reach the moon? Imagine that. That'd be nuts. Oh, speaking of like space stuff. Yeah, bear's ready. I'm, I'm going to have to like wrap this up soon. Um, speaking of space stuff, uh, don't forget, and if you live in the United States, um, April 8th, there's going to be a total eclipse. And if you can possibly, um, you know, travel so that you're within the, um, the epicenter of the eclipse is going to be worth it. So I'll probably be talking about that some more as we're going into like April 8th, but like, I'm really big on that eclipsing. Uh, I'm going to participate in it. I hope that you guys get a chance to as well. Um, but yeah, so the dogs are going nuts back here, <laughs> like Lorena <laughs> noticed. Um, so I am going to wrap this up. We're at the two hour mark anyway. So we got the basics of Higgins here. I want to make more progress on them, but I think this is a good start where I can like, um, you know, finish them up off camera. Um, and sorry, I didn't make more progress on them, but, uh, He's such an adorable animal. If you go to the reference picture, so we're getting close there. There's like, um, there's, yes, yes, bear, hold on. Um, so there's some more value and some darker shading and stuff like that I need to get in there, but uh, we've got the basics of them. We're, we're doing pretty well. But as you can see, the dogs are going nuts, so I am gonna have to call it short. Um, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. This has been a fun conversation tonight. Uh, you know, talking about cryptocurrency, talking about all kinds of different things. Uh, you know, if you're into like the DB Cooper thing, make sure you check out uh, Packer Jack's um, uh, book that I linked to earlier. Um, you know, just because we, Packer Jack's a fan of the uh, show and we're a fan of him. So like, <laughs> look at this psycho dog back here. Look at this. What do you have to say about that? <laughs> do you like Higgins? You want to meet Higgins? You want me Higgins in real life? Bear? What do you think of Higgins? <laughs> Bear's adorable. All right. Anyway, this was a fun stream. I appreciate you guys. Um, I'm going to finish up this picture and I will uh, put it on the uh, community tab. But uh, I'll be back uh, Tuesday uh, unless I get bored before then and create something over the weekend. But until then, Appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. Have a good weekend. Bye.